Sometimes people who use other game engines think we game maker users have like Stockholm syndrome or something because of how excited we get when game maker adds features that other systems have had access to for like years and years and sometimes even decades. Anyway, starting with the game maker 2024.600 betas, we now have direct access to the depth buffer. This is something that some people have been asking for for a very long time, and I'm certainly glad that it has finally arrived. So what this means, for those who don't know, uh, if you've ever done some of the more advanced tricks in 3D in Game Maker, like um, probably the most common use case is going to be deferred rendering, you are probably all too familiar with this trick of having to um, having to encode the depth of a fragment as a color value. Um, somewhat more recently, about a year ago, Game Maker added different like support for different surface formats, which makes this slightly easier because you can just encode a float instead of having to turn that into a color value. That's still an extra step, which we no longer have to do, thanks to our now direct access to the depth buffer. So there's been a handful of new functions added to Game Maker 2024.600, uh, the June of 2024 monthly release, which will pertain to accessing the depth buffer in different ways. But the one that is, I think, most interesting to most people is going to be surface get texture depth, which, as the name implies, is going to retrieve a pointer to the depth buffer of a surface, and you will be able to use that with any of the texture-related functions. So things like setting a texture to a uh, to a drawn primitive or to a vertex buffer or to a um, to a sampler index in a shader. So this is um, this is the uh, the rendering depth uh, project that I made quite a while ago, about two years ago. And I think now instead of I'm going to um, this is on a separate branch, by the way, of the main repository. Uh, I'm going to mess around with this a little bit. I'm going to. Um, return to, to actual basic 3D rendering of the actual, like, scene, uh, not its depth information, uh, so, such that when I when I run the example project, we're going to be looking at um, just a, a lit scene like this. Uh, we are not going to do anything fancy and encode depth in any way, shape, or form, because, um, long story short, that is what the depth buffer will do for us, which we previously did not have a way to actually access for our own purposes later on. And now we do. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy, too fancy with this in this video. Um, I honestly would like to at some point, probably not too long from now, uh, redo my deferred rendering videos because there's a few things about them that I didn't really like. And um, it can just be it can just be generally done easier uh, now that we have this. And I think it's worth redoing. So uh, I have disabled automatic drawing of the application surface. And uh, if I don't draw it manually, then we're just going to like not actually render anything to the screen uh, if we were in the game. Uh, I'm going to first make use of this surface. Um, let's call it our depth buffer is going to equal surface get texture depth. Uh, the surface ID can be the application surface or whatever other render target you would like. Uh, this is equivalent to surface get texture without the depth part, so the same way that you can use surface get texture to uh, retrieve the like the texture data for a surface that you can use to to draw with, uh, surface get texture depth is going to do the same thing. So you can set this depth buffer to a uh, to a shader sampler, like I said, using the uh, texture set stage function. If you have a uh, shader which you want to uh, set the depth buffer to as a uniform, I. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to uh, use the draw primitive begin, let's say draw primitive begin texture uh, function, and uh, we're just going to draw two triangles on the screen uh, in the form of just a rectangle covering the screen. Um, let's see, I think a uh, triangle fan should suffice. Uh, the texture ID can be the depth buffer. Uh, some point later on, draw primitive end, and in the middle, draw, uh, how does it go? Draw vertex texture. Uh, let's start at 0, 0, or x texture and y texture can be 0, 0. Uh, next vertex, draw vertex texture can be room width 0, or texture coordinate can be 1, 0, draw vertex texture room with room height, 1, 1, and draw vertex texture, 0 room height, 0 and 1. 
So if I were to just draw this on the screen, we would get something that's basically going to be, I think, like a, just a red rectangle, which isn't super exciting. Um, if I were to create myself a new shader that can actually interpret this, uh, let's say shd underscore draw depth. And if I were to shader set shd draw depth, and when we're done, shader reset, uh, we're going to be able to sample from the depth texture, which is just going to be, in our case, gm underscore base texture, because I've set it as the texture that that primitive is drawing with. Uh, we can say, I'm just going to actually say a float depth value equals texture 2D from the sampler, from the texture coordinates, uh, and we're just going to look at the red channel. So this is effectively a... Um, if you think about the different surface formats that you can use in GameMaker, uh, this is basically just going to be a red 32 float um, texture that we're going to sample the depth from. Uh, it's probably worth noting that the depth buffer in GameMaker and in honestly a lot of other systems is split into 24 bits for the um, for the actual depth value and 8 bits for a stencil value. Uh, stencil is not relevant to us right now. It is interesting in its own right, and I do want to make a video on that as well soon because you can do some cool things with it, but uh, that shouldn't really affect how you have to use, how you get to use the um, the depth texture. I just thought that was worth um, worth calling attention to. So if we were to, uh, let's say, GL frag color uh, can be a uh, vector four of of this depth value on the red, green, and blue channel, and one on the alpha channel. Uh, this is going to look really not that interesting. Um, this is uh, this is just going to be a white surface to us, at least for right now. And that is because the depth is not stored in the depth buffer in a linear fashion. So we're going to have to do something known as linearizing the depth. So the way that um, the depth buffer works when you have a perspective camera, there's more precision for objects that are close to the camera that you're trying to draw. So the things that are right up in your face, it's easier to... Um, to, uh, to tell them apart if they have very similar depth values and uh, prevent them from Z fighting and that sort of thing. And there's less precision for objects that are farther away from the camera. The thinking being that, um, that objects that are right in front of you are more important to, uh, to have a high degree of precision in the depth buffer than things that are far away from you. And the equation that's used to calculate that looks something like this. It's based on your projection matrix and the uh, curve that it produces looks something like this. I don't want to spend too much time um, digging into this right now, hey. but this means that if we want to turn this into a linear value where like a value of zero is something that's right in front of you, a value of one is the far clipping plane and a value of 0 0.5 is halfway in between, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. So let me uh, write a little shader function and I'm gonna call this float linearize depth. Uh, that's a word that I'm going to be tired of saying by the end of this video. And this is going to take three parameters. Uh, one is going to be a float for the depth value, which is going to be what we're sampling off of the depth texture like this. Um, a second parameter is going to be float z near, and the third, uh, you probably guessed, is going to be float z far. And we're going to uh, basically reverse the equation that we use to, or the, at least that the um, that the graphics API uses to encode depth in the, in the depth buffer. The first thing I'm going to want to do is um, multiply depth, multiply the input depth by 2.0 and uh, subtract 1.0. Uh, we can we can just reassign the depth value like this. And the second thing we're going to need to do is uh, bear with me for just a moment. 2.0 times the z near value. We're going to divide that all by, in parentheses, uh, z far plus z near minus uh, depth multiplied by the quantity of z far minus z near. And we're going to return that value. And this is going to give us linearized depth. If I have to say that one more time, my tongue is going to be tied in a knot. So uh, in between where we sample the depth value from the depth buffer, we can call that function. Uh, the inputs can be the depth value itself. Uh, we're going to need the z near and z far, so I'm going to have to uh, bring those in as uniforms. Let's call those u underscore z near and u underscore z far. 
And uh, the result of this function we can assign back to the depth value. Uh, I'm going to need to, uh, one, make those uniform float values because those, those don't have a type. Uh, those need a type. And two, I'm going to need to go over here when we set our shader, shader set uniform float. Uh, the handle can be shader get uniform. We can use the drawing depth shader and the uniform name can be u underscore z near. And the value, uh, what did I make the near and far clipping planes in this example? I'm just gonna hard code them. Or I guess I'm not gonna hard code them because they are, they are these values. All right, great. And we can do the same thing with ZFAR. And this is going to, um, this is gonna do a little math operation, uh, which will turn the depth value that we're going to encode uh, into a linear value. Uh, my clipping planes are rather far apart, which means that pretty much everything, relatively speaking, is right up in my face. So it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be very dark. Uh, let me change the far clipping plane to, uh, 4,000 is still pretty far off. Let's change that to 1,000. Um, all right, that's much better. So uh, objects that are on the far clipping plane have a, um, now have a depth value of one, so they're going to be encoded as white. Objects that are on uh, very close to the near clipping plane are going to have a depth value of zero, so they're going to be encoded as black. Uh, we can see, if I, unlock the, um, if I unlock the camera, we can see that if I get really close to something, it's going to turn dark. We can see that if I back away from that, from that pirate show over there, it is going to fade off into the mist. Uh, that looks like pixel fog, but it is not pixel fog. That is just the... Um, the depth fading out towards the horizon. I guess you could. I guess you could compare it to pixel fog, uh, if you wanted to. But that's a. Uh, it's a story for another day. And we are now using the depth buffer. So, um, this is going to be uh, referred to as linear depth. Uh, generally speaking, if you were to talk to graphics programmers about this sort of thing, uh, a value between zero and one that's linear, that's been transformed like this. If you want the actual like distance to the camera. Um, of a fragment, you're going to need to transform this again. So once you have your linear depth, um, you can say depth value multiplied by the span between z far minus z near, and uh, well, I guess those are going to be prefixed with u underscore here. Uh, you're going to multiply the depth value by the quantity of z far minus z near, and you're going to add z near to the end of that, and that's going to give you a um, that's going to give you a linear depth in like absolute world space units how far something is from the camera. Uh, this is not going to be super interesting if I were to render it because um, it, the uh, the value is going to be clamped at one, and pretty much everything in the scene is more than one unit away from the camera in world space units. So um, it we're just going to see a white screen. But if you did want to do a calculation like distance fog, or if you did want to use something like this for um, lights in a deferred renderer. Uh, you would want to transform the depth value something like this so that you could get that value, get that um, world space value. All right, so there are, a, uh, as I mentioned, a handful of other functions pertaining to depth that you can use. Um, I am not, at least not at this moment, going to um, going to go over all of them. Other things you are allowed to do are uh, bind the depth buffer of one surface to a different surface when you're setting the surface as a target, uh, which may allow you to do some interesting things. The thing that comes to mind for me, once again, is if you're doing a deferred renderer, um, after you've combined all of the G buffer surfaces into like the deferred surface, if you want to go back and add like transparency features onto that composite surface, uh, you could you could surface that target to the uh, to the final surface. Uh, you could bind the depth buffer of the, uh, the original uh, G buffer. And then you should be able to just uh, keep drawing as if the, the original uh, depth buffer is still in operation. So that's kind of fun. Um, what else do we have? We have a couple uh, draw clear functions that were added so that you could specifically clear the depth buffer if you wanted to. Uh, the stencil buffer, which uh, is another thing that I mentioned that you could do with this new addition to Game Maker and a, uh, a draw clear extended function, which will give you control over color, alpha, depth, and stencil all at the same time. 
And uh, lastly, and I am sorry if this video just kind of turns into me reading patch notes, but you, there are a pair of functions which uh, serve to um, copy the depth buffer to and from a surface and the regular buffer if you ever wanted to do that. Um, this um, sounds like it only works on Windows and I guess on like Xbox and other Windows-like platforms, uh, DirectX platforms, uh, not on Linux or Apple computers or OpenGL, anything. And for whatever reason, it does not work if you are using MSAA, which I uh, can't say I know anyone who's ever done in Game Maker, but it's a, uh, I guess it's an option. So that is rendering, that is uh, rather using the depth buffer in Game Maker. I hope you all have fun with this because I know a lot of people have been asking for this for a long time. Probably the next thing I cover will be uh, some things that you can do with the stencil buffer, but that'll have to wait. Uh, for now, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. <clears throat> if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you should all go check out the Steam page for Wizarducks, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Black Alien for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.